Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Batman The Ultimate Movie Collection. It includes six Batman figures and one Bat Signal six-pack. Now, this is something of an interesting release because I think half the figures are re-releases of some variety. I mean, there seem to be some modification. And then the other half are figures that will most assuredly be released on their own. And it's, it's, these are all McFarlane toys, DC multiverse figures. So you know basically what you're getting, probably. Questionable sculpts, questionable articulation, and an over, an overestimated level of significance, I think, is a fair way to put that. Because you get this, the most obscene action figure packaging ever. We're just going to talk about that briefly right now. It is humongous. It's obnoxious. It is crazy that they use this packaging. In one sense, it's really cool, and we'll get into that in a second. In another sense, it's just nuts. But you do get the six Batman figures. We're going to try to get through all of it in one video. If I feel like it's getting too long, I might break off half of it and do a part two. But as a result of this being six figures in one or two reviews, we're probably going to be skipping a video this weekend because I simply don't have time and you guys need, need to have time to watch stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and get them off the stand and take a closer look. Okay, real quick before we get into the figures, I do want to take a look at my package. It is incredibly large and probably bigger than it <laughs> needs to be. It is humongous. Just for comparison's sake, there's a 12 inch ruler. It's up just over halfway. It is the least efficient layout of action figures I've ever seen in a package. It looks okay from the front, but it's very um, subtle, toned down. You get the shiny bat symbol there and you get the logos here, but otherwise that's a whole lot of black nothingness. On the side, it's okay, Ultimate Movie Collection. That symbol again. On the back, it's a little bit nicer, sort of. That's Gotham City, but it's like, okay, eh. And then down here, you can see the cards, which we'll look at later. I know you can't see it all perfectly right now, but you don't really need to. And then on this side, 100 years of uh, WB celebrating every story. I feel like that's, that's not something they can really do because there are lots of stories that they don't own. It's a weird thing. Okay, and I do want to show you the inside, which is kind of strange, it's velcroed sideways. You do get these coffins for each figure. Now, I found it very frustrating that the black trays don't come out without pulling out a whole segment, and then you have to separate them. It's kind of annoying, but obviously it doesn't really make a difference. You just don't think it's gonna come out easily. It's a pain in the ass, sort of. Okay, then you do get the black coffins, and it actually looks really nice uh, with the figures in there. So if you have like unlimited space, which I know most of us do have, uh, you could leave the figures in there, leave it open, and it looks really cool. I find it so bothersome being somewhat OCD that on this side, we have the blue and white DC multiverse cardboard separating the different trays. And on this side, these guys come in a double tray. Oh, if I was going to display this and not throw it away, that would be bothersome. And you do get the bat symbol down here. So it's kind of cool packaging, but it's just so incredibly large. And I know most of you do throw your packaging away. So this feels to me like they are way over celebrating what is essentially just a bunch of McFarlane Batman figures or what are a bunch of Batman figures in one box. It's crazy to me. Um, okay, so let's get this giant recycling can filler upper out of the way. Okay, so now we have six Batman figures. I'm gonna run through each one of them um, as I normally do my reviews, and uh, I'm just gonna, I think we're gonna just do one long video, guys, so pop some corn if you are so inclined to watch it in one sitting. Okay, so this guy stands to the top of his head, just shy of 19 centimeters, not counting the bat ears, and that's gonna make him roughly seven and three eighths. That's Batman number one, Batman number two. So that's the original uh, Keaton Batman. This is Batman forever, that Batman number two. He is about 18 and a half centimeters to the top of his head, and that's gonna make him roughly seven and a quarter inches. Okay, we're gonna get into these more as we go, but for now we're just gonna get the height measurements all out of the way because it's scaling's a little bit wonky. This guy's about seven and an eighth inches to the top of his head, and that's gonna make him roughly 18 centimeters, and then we have Christian Bale, 
Batman, the Dark Knight trilogy, almost 19. We'll call it 18.75 centimeters. And that's gonna be roughly seven and three eighths inches. Then we have Ben Affleck, who I think is the biggest of all of the Batmans, as far as actual height goes. He stands roughly uh, seven, just over seven and a quarter, maybe three sixteenths, or I mean five sixteenths. Uh, and that's gonna make him about 18 and a half centimeters, roughly. And then we have Pattinson, which I'm guessing is the smallest other than Keaton. Because Keaton's a pretty short guy, but I don't know Pattinson's height offhand. And this guy stands just over 18 and a half centimeters, and that's going to make him roughly 7 and 3 eighths, give or take. Okay, so there's a lot of heights there. You can write them all down and compare them if you want to. Okay, now before we get into anything else, I do want to do a quick question of the day. How do you guys feel about a giant multi-pack like this, a six-pack of figures? Is it something you want or would you rather just buy them all individually? To me, it's like it's a cool thing for the company and I'm sure, I'm absolutely positive at some point Todd talked about how cool it was. I know he's big on if, if it's cool, do it. And I don't have a problem with that. That's a generally a good philosophy for action figures, but I'm not sure it was thought out as well for this. Are you guys down for this? Or are you just gonna piecemeal these figures when they get their inevitable individual releases and that sort of thing? Let me know how you guys feel about it. To me, I'm, I'm indifferent. Uh, unless they are different than the original releases in some way or the, the standalones like these guys all have the cloth capes and Slightly different finishes and things. So it's like I don't know some people are probably gonna feel like they're screwed if they don't buy this in which case It's not a great thing. All right Let's talk about the aesthetic across the board. Uh, they do ha all have cloth capes. They are all the same material Every cape is the same material Okay, so there's Pattinson's cape you're not gonna be able to tell because it's just black cloth. We already lost focus. I'll try. There we go. That's what it looks like on uh, Keaton, and that's what it looks like on Pattinson. Same material. Not the best looking capes in the world, but they are cloth, so if you like those, good. Uh, if you don't, unfortunate for you. I want to also note, across the board, the capes are the same black material. <laughs> it's important to note that they're the same color too because we have all different colors of bat suits here, which are not necessarily all accurate, though uh, probably closer than they could have been, so that's a good thing. Uh, but yeah, the capes don't look great and we'll get into that. So okay, let's look at this guy. We're gonna just run through the aesthetics. I have to say the head does not look right. In the movie, his cowl was all one piece. There was no neck. And this totally destroys that. In fact, his overall proportions are really strange. He has very lo long legs, relatively short body, narrow chest, weird sculpt for the chest, kind of low small shoulders, and then a big lumpy head uh, with a skinny neck. It does not at all, to me, evoke the, the feelings of the Michael Keaton Batman, particularly because of the cowl. The paint job on the face, we're gonna do this, I'm gonna cover everything, but I'm gonna kind of do it quickly as best I can. The paint job is clean as heck. I like the paint job. I think that's really nice. The logo on the chest, uh, shouldn't it be more gold and less yellow? I could be wrong. I, I totally could be wrong, I don't remember. But that's very, very lemony yellow. All right, and then on the belt, bad paint job. It's scuffed up. Nothing else is painted on this guy. Nothing else is painted. It is just bare plastic and it's different levels of finish. Not the worst offender in the bunch, but it is that. So aesthetically speaking, this is not the most attractive Batman figure. I'm guessing most people who want a Michael Keaton Batman will be okay with it, but meh, it, it definitely could be a lot better. You do get, by the way, I didn't mention this. I should be more specific just to be clear. All of the capes are not the same shape but they are the same material and same color. So his does have the uh, scalloping at the bottom, which is not bad. And it goes out nicely, but there's no wire or anything. So forget about doing anything useful with that. Okay, so that's the aesthetics of the Keaton Batman. Let's move on to Batman Forever Batman. His cape is basically the same all the way around. We have the scallops and the black material. They pick up dust like crazy. Yes, my review table gets dusty and it's white, so I don't notice it sometimes. Okay, I don't know about this. It looks awfully blue to me, and I know why they did it. Like a gunmetal finish is kind of accurate, but this looks really blue, really, really light blue compared to what it should be if you ask me. 
Uh, and then also the head, sort of the same problem, only I think this guy's head sculpt is a little bit weird. I think that looks bad. <laughs> that looks really bad from most angles, other than like a very few select angles look okay, but to me that looks really, really weird. Uh, proportioning on this guy, not as bad, but it's still not great. Still have pretty long legs, pretty long beefy legs compared to the rest of the figure. I like this particular color, but I don't like it on this Batman. It feels inaccurate. And then we have the paint job to talk about on the face. The eyes are clean, the mouth is clean. The paint job for the cowl could be a lot cleaner, especially at the nose, that looks really weird. Just an orange triangle in there. So it's all right, I guess, other than the nose, the belt is not great. Uh, to me, this does not feel like any sort of special six pack. It just feels like a bunch of regular McFarlane releases all jammed into one. Also, he's fairly shiny, not just metallic, but shiny, except for the diaper, which is really, really big, goes up really high, and it does not have that same luster, so it, it looks weird. Same thing for the knees and elbows and ankles. It's not great, and I don't think having the black cape up against this relatively light blue gunmetal color looks good. It, I don't remember this being accurate at all. Uh, maybe the cape was black, but this was a whole lot closer to black, especially in the dark film. So this, I'm not feeling it, unfortunately. If this, if there was ever a six pack of figures made for me, it's this one. But I, so far, I'm not thrilled. Okay, let's take a look at Batman and Robin Batman. By the way, I think this suit, both of these suits minus the nipples, um, and also, didn't this movie have a suit that looked just like this? And didn't this movie have a suit that looked a lot like this, but with the like white and black? I think so. Like silver and black, I guess. Anyway, uh, I think those are two of the best Batman suits that have ever come out of the movies. So this one, at first glance, I'm like, this looks pretty cool, but it's also, it's really lean. And as far as the cape goes, same cape, same scallops, same everything again. But he's, he's pretty lean, I think, for the suit, because the upper... Uh, I shouldn't say he's lean, I should say the top half is really lean compared to the th thickness of his legs. All, on all of these figures, just about, almost all of them anyway, uh, the legs are really big and beefy and then the torsos are small and it's strange looking. And then they have these weird lollipop heads, not lollipop syndrome, but lollipop heads. And I don't think this cowl is the right shape, it's missing ears, a spot for his human ears to be in there, it's way too flat. Very strange. Eyes are painted nicely. I think it's a fairly good likeness, actually. I think they all are fairly good sculpts as far as the details go, but it's the composition with the heads on top of the cowls and whatnot. I'm not loving it. I do like the details in the suit, though there is no paint, literally zero paint throughout this entire figure. His suit is a fairly glossy dark gray, which I think is a fine color for this release, except for the diaper, which is a lighter, flatter gray. Stands out, looks like he's actually wearing a diaper. Otherwise, it looks okay, but so far we haven't quite hit the nail on the head. We all have some kind of close approximations to what these Batmans look like, but nothing that really feels like it's what it's supposed to be. In my opinion, it's my review, that's how that goes. All right, Christian Bale Batman, not too dissimilar to the one that we reviewed not that long ago where his arms fell off. Uh, I think it's not exactly the same, but it still is very gray. I think the other one was less gray than this, maybe. But this is still very gray. You can tell by the differentiation here at the chest. Black and gray, clear difference. I think the belt is really nicely done. That is the right color for his belt. That's cool. Sculpt is still pretty sharp. I like that. Details on the hands, I like that. A little bit of paintwork. Not a ton on this guy, but it's definitely enough to look okay. Let's check out the paintwork on his face. The eyes are okay. Mouth is okay. Sculpt is, again, okay. I said this last time. It's still kind of weird. It's kind of elongated and strange looking. But because his head is actually supposed to have the, the break here, it looks much better overall, I would say. But it's still too narrow, if you ask me. And I do think the nose is too long. Like, like the head is kind of stretched out this way. But it doesn't look too bad. I, I would say so far, this is maybe the best looking of the bunch. He doesn't have quite as much of a disproportionate body either. His legs are not as huge compared to the upper body. But they all do feel a little bit stretched out. So this one's okay. His cape, not quite the same scallops. They're a little bit shallower, it looks like to me. It'd be too hard for me to pull them all out. I'll pull out this one, let's see. Well, he's got pretty shallow. No, he is shallower. Okay, I was right, good. His scallops are a little shallower. That's probably accurate. I don't remember his cape, honestly. Okay, moving on. 
to Ben Affleck Batman. They decided to go with the armored one, which is kind of strange. Uh, and especially the way they did it. He is very armored because the silver is very silver. <laughs> silver and black with the almost like olive drab greenish gray. It's a strange look. I don't know if that's coming across on camera, but there is definite yellow in his gray. So this isn't an accurate look as far as I can remember from any movie. I don't remember him ever being anything but dark gray. And I don't remember his armor being this silver up against that. It's very standout-ish. It's cool looking, but it doesn't, I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. I'll pull up an image to show you guys. I'll probably do that for all of them. Uh, but yeah, I don't think this looks very accurate and it's definitely not supposed to be greenish gray. So that's strange, but let's look at the face. The paint job for the face, definitely questionable. I think this eye is a little bit crossed. Paint job for the mouth is okay. Sculpt is okay. I don't believe this is the right cowl. Is it? Didn't he have something up? Because this is the tactical suit with the armor and everything, so he's supposed to be able to have goggles. Aren't the goggle things supposed to be up here? It's not this right here, is it? I don't know, I don't remember anymore. But it looks to me like this is the regular head on top of, no it's not because it has this here. I don't know, we're gonna have to see about that. But it looks okay. But to me, the head still looks really narrow. And on this one, the head looks relatively small compared to all the other ones who had relatively large heads. This guy's proportioning is definitely much better. He's a lot bulkier, so that helps, but it's definitely better proportioning. Here's the thing to note. He's got two trigger finger hands. I don't know if you guys noticed, all of the other Batman figures in this bunch so far have had fist hands. This guy has two trigger finger hands. And it does have a nice paint job throughout where all the paint is, but there's a lot of spots where the paint isn't. So again, it's okay, but not great. And his cape, very shallow scallops, so that's pretty good, that's accurate enough. All right, and then lastly, we have the patents in Batman, which I think is very oddly proportioned, very oddly. He's very, very lanky and kind of bubbly looking. If I move the cape out of the way, it's, it's quite strange looking. And he has a dry brush on most of his body. None of the other figures have any dry brush, but he is covered in a light gray dry brush, which is, again, very strange. A Little bit of detail paint work throughout, not bad. Belt is just solid glossy black, which is a little bit weird looking. Chest logo is glossy black. Head paint job. Uh, it's not great. His is actually the worst. He's really pale. Maybe they were playing on the uh, vampire thing. I don't know. Eyes are okay, but he's really, really pale. And I think his sculpt is really screwed too. He has no place for his ears. It looks like they just forgot to sculpt the sides of the head on a lot of these. He looks goofy. He almost looks like a cat because of the way they did that. He has nothing going on over here. You could not put that on a human head, that cowl. That's weird looking. Okay, so that's pretty weird looking. I think he is actually, this one's tied for worse looking, this one in the Michael Keaton. And then his cape is probably the same as the Ben Affleck one. That's what it looks like. And it's probably not because of the way they connect. Yeah, it's probably a different piece of material, but it's got the same type of scallops. So, yeah, he's not a great looking figure. In fact, none of them are particularly good looking figures. So aesthetically speaking, it's not like they're the worst things in the world, but if you're a real Batman aficionado, then you're gonna be like, mm, it's okay. I'm not thrilled with the way any of them look. So I'm gonna give this set an aesthetic rating, of, I'm doing all of them at once, an aesthetic rating of only six out of 10. Frankly speaking, there's just too many problems. There are just too many problems. Uh, the heads looking weird being the number one thing. And then the oversized uh, legs, the bottom halves of the body, very strange. And then the coloring, very, very strange. Okay, let's get into the accessories. I wanna point out that for this very special edition set, we don't get special edition bases, we just get six of these magnificent black pieces of plastic. And I think that is just, it's so obvious to me that this company doesn't actually care about what they're doing. It's just nuts. It's so strange because if any time there was a time to put in there some extra special Batman logo display stands, it's this one. None of these guys have special stands and they should have all had their own logos. 
Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the super special bat signal. It looks really nice. I think it looks good. It doesn't rotate at all, but you do get the rotation this way, the, the tilting of the thing. That's pretty cool. And it has a nice dry brush throughout. Looks good. All right, I like it. And it does light up. There's a pull tab back here. You pull that out, you can turn it on, and then you can project the bat logo up to 15 feet with, no, I'm kidding. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work at all. <laughs> it's really garbage. All right, before we do that though, I wanna show you, we get different lenses. All right, you get, that's the uh, Christian Bale lens. Then you get the Ben Affleck lens. Then you get the first three figures lens, Keaton and uh, the other two. And then you get this one, which is the newest one. Um, Vampire Boy. Okay, so you get different lenses, that's pretty cool. But as far as this thing working, it is abysmal. I know what you guys are gonna say, oh, your electronics never work, it's just the batteries. No, because I've tried different versions. I mean, I've purchased multiples of things and it's not, it's not the batteries. It's just that they don't work. Okay, so there, I've got the lights off enough that you can barely see what's happening. So I'm gonna turn this on. You'll be able to see it like that. And maybe that's all it's supposed to be. It's just supposed to look like it's glowing, shooting the signal. But if I put my hand, like you can see, my hand is right next to the thing. All right, see it? It is projecting. Technically it's projecting, but just barely. The light blows. It's terrible. All right, so let me turn this back on. We'll talk about this briefly. Uh, I think what they were going for is that it's a display piece and not a practical bat signal, which I think it could have been both. Not that you need a bat signal, but it would be pretty cool to have this shining up on the wall above your Batman display. But they didn't do that. And the reason it doesn't work is this is frosted, not the lens, but the, the dome. I don't remember what the part is called in a flashlight. Uh, reflector, I guess. It's not a reflector. It's just like frosty plastic. It's just white plastic in there. So it doesn't look good. If you hide the LED behind the bat symbol, it looks okay, but otherwise you just see the LED, which is built like a flashlight, even though it's not meant to throw light, so it makes no sense. That whole back of it should have just been frosted and lit up like crazy so that it's just a really good looking bat symbol from, or bat signal from the front. But having the LED in there, but not actually throwing any light is ugly and cheap. And it's just, to me, it's a waste of time. It's a, it's a waste of money. That's, that's a pretty garbage bat signal. I have a little keychain one that throws a symbol way better than that. Okay, and then lastly, we have our super duper collector trading cards where the artwork on it looks like uh, coloring book artwork from the 90s. Okay, they do have the chrome on the edges, so that's okay. There's number one. They are cool images, but they do look just like coloring book artwork, if you ask me. Nicely colored, I'll add, but Definitely coloring book artwork. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. If you grew up in the 90s, you definitely had one of those like two inch thick coloring books from like Big Lots or someplace. You know what I'm talking about. If you do, let me know in the comment section below. So yeah, they're okay as far as collector cards go, but that's about it. So as far as accessories go, the rating is gonna be a three out of 10 because we don't get any alternate hands, especially for Shooty Fingers, Ben Affleck, and we don't get any batarangs. There's not a single batarang in a six piece Batman set. Special 100 year WB garbage, not a single batarang in the largest set of Batman action figures to ever exist. Maybe not, but maybe. So yeah, that is pretty garbage and a bat signal that doesn't work. Okay, let's talk about the articulation. I'm gonna try to go fast. It's all standard McFarlane fare. Uh, I'll do it as best as I can since we're doing this all in one video. Okay, so the head is separated from the neck. Inaccurate, but maybe it poses really well. He can look down no farther than that. He can look up that far, which is not bad, I'll take it. By the way, I really like the face paint on most of these figures. His is really good, I like that. It does lean side to side, so you can do some posing, but he didn't. He held his face straight and then looked off to the side. So if ever they could have gotten away with a side eye, it would have been an alternate head for this guy. <laughs> they didn't do that. All right, the shoulder does have the ball socket in there that lets it slide around, so that's helpful. It's not bad, it kind of gives a little bit more chest to him because he has a really, really skinny chest. So decent range there. Arm up to horizontal, no problem. Full rotation, bicep swivel is fine. Double jointed elbow, that works fine. It's a pretty ugly elbow, but it does work. 
and then the wrists are ball hinges. All right, let's check the torso. I'm gonna go as fast as I can on these guys. Remember, none of the capes have any wire or anything like that, so they're just gonna be dangling. He leans back nicely, but he does have a pretty huge gap in his torso. He leans forward a little bit, so it's not terrible, but it's not great. It is a double ball peg. Doesn't have a ton of range, but it's there. And then leaning to the side is decent, and you're gonna get some rotation. Lower torso, another ball peg. It does lean back a little bit, leans forward a little bit, side to side, barely and some rotation, so not great torso range. Does lean back well, but with a gap. So as usual, can't lean forward. For the hips, they go out to the side that far, and you can stretch that diaper a little bit to get him a little bit farther, so almost splits. His diaper doesn't match color-wise either, by the way. I don't know if you guys noticed that. All right, so yeah, almost splits, bring the legs forward, forget about it, the diaper goes too low, can't pose the legs forward. Going back, just a little bit. Thigh swivel, none to speak of. Double jointed knee, let's see. Decent range, proportioning is a little bit strange, his lower leg's a little bit too long, but it's not too bad, so I guess that's okay. Ankles, I'm guessing, are the reason his lower leg's too long because we have this giant ankle joint in here on top of the sculpt. It is sculpted, but it doesn't really match the sculpt. All right, so you get technically really good range, but the ratchets are so heavy in these Batman figures that standing all six of these guys up on that display stand for the turnaround in the beginning was a nightmare. They don't like standing. You get really good range out of that joint, especially with this piece being soft, but they do not like standing at all. Toe joint is actually really well done. You can see they didn't quite go all the way to the bottom of the sole, but so close that this is almost exactly how you wanna do a toe joint. Said that kind of funny. Very nice toe joint on that guy. So this guy's articulation, very average at best. Nothing impressive. Let's set him aside and move on to uh, Batman Forever. I'm gonna, I'll be amazed if I get through this whole review without calling them by the wrong names. I wonder if I've done that yet. Okay, so Batman Forever. Looks up nicely, looks down nicely, leans. All right, he's got way better range. Way better range. That is a wonderful double ball peg. Love it. All right, for the shoulder, same amount of play pretty much. Good range there. Getting the arm up to horizontal, no bueno. Using the best combination of the ball peg in there and the hinge, that's as high up as his arm goes. That's what she said. Okay, full rotation that way. Bicep swivel, good range in the elbow. Not the best looking elbow, but again, it does uh, work. Ball hinge wrists, that's all the same. I love this plastic, too bad it seems to be not quite that accurate. It should be darker. All right, doesn't lean back very far, does lean forward nicely. Hey, what the heck? That's unusual. Down here it leans back on that ball peg and it doesn't lean forward, so they kind of mixed the two, but it's not a bad combo. That's one of the better ones we've seen lately. Leaning to the side is not bad, and of course you get your rotation at both spots. That's not so bad, all right. This is a really photogenic figure because of that blue. I'm a sucker for that kind of that kind of finish. Okay, so the hips do go out to the side, not quite as far, I can force them, but the diaper is just too much. Too much meat in that diaper. Going forward, a little bit better range, I think. A little bit better range going back. Thigh swivel, none to speak of. Double jointed knees have good range, but as you can see, he has really long lower legs. Really, really long. They should be basically in line with this, and he's got like, this much extra, so that's that's no good for propor proportioning, that's why it looks weird. Ankle joint is big, and again, heavily ratcheted. Let's see how this is. So they're back to doing the not great design, though their soles are so thin it's okay. Uh, it's okay-ish. They should just bring the radius all the way down to the bottom, but it's well placed and it's not loose, so I'll take it. And then you do get a proper ankle rocker out of that joint. So his articulation is Okay, it's uh, better in the torso and in the neck, but just average everywhere else. So that's a little bit better, not too bad. Moving on to Batman and Robin. Okay, making good time here. I don't wanna waste your guys' time. Okay, for the neck, he does look up pretty well. Looks down okay, leans to the side pretty well. I like his paint job a lot too. Mine's got some problems around the chin, but it's still a nice paint job from a distance. It looks great. So it's a decent double ball peg. Not as good as the last one, but probably better than the first one. For the shoulder. 
Same about range there, raising the arm up. Uh, maybe a little bit better than Batman Forever. Yeah, it is a little bit better, but not by much. You don't get as much range out of that as you probably should. Full rotation, bicep swivel, double jointed elbow. That's all pretty much standard. Wrists are on big ball hinges. Okay, let's try the torso. It doesn't lean very far in either direction. It's pretty average in both directions. Same thing side to side. Down here, goes back. Doesn't go forward too far. So, his works well enough, I guess, but it's definitely not as good as the last one. So, it's okay. And his diaper is just so obviously not the same color or finish. That's really weird. I really wish McFarlane would stop making these giant diapers on these figures with these giant legs and tiny torsos. It really throws off the look. All right, bring the legs out to the side, full on splits. Pretty much, pretty darn close. Going forward, best one yet. His diaper flexes the most. Goes back the farthest too, that is all right. Thigh swivel, a touch, but not really. Double jointed knee, functional, and again, disproportionate. I think at this point it's safe to say that McFarlane sculptures just aren't very good and the people in charge of them don't know what they're doing either. All right, ankle goes all the way back all the way forward really good range heavy ratchets pain in the ass but functional this guy's toe joint is decent looking but it's a little bit too far back and it is very loose again ankle rocker is ridiculously good at doing that so his articulation is probably overall average i would say there's a couple of good things here and there a couple bad things here and there it's pretty average somewhere between the other two okay moving on to christian bale batman he looks up not very far. He looks down pretty nicely, so that's okay. Leaning to the side, not too bad. I'll take it. There you go. That's the pose right there that should sell everybody on a double ball peg neck. You cannot do that on a neck like this. It just isn't possible. So, decent enough neck. Shoulders on this guy. We have to move the shoulder pads so that we can do it. Let's see, get the cape out of the way. All right, so the shoulder pads do flex. You can get his arm up to almost horizontal. It looks bad and it's kind of unpleasant to do, but it is technically there. As far as the ball peg goes, he still has it. Doesn't have quite as much play as the other guys, but it's in there. All right, and of course, full rotation. These shoulder pads really do get in the way with the cape and with everything else. Okay, bicep swivel is okay. My arms did not fall off this time. Someone said I did that on purpose last time. I did not. I tried to make these fall off to see if I could, and I couldn't. Not without being weirdly aggressive. Okay, so the double jointed elbow is a little bit strange, especially down at the bottom, right here. It looks okay when it's straight, but then when you bend it, you get an extra lump in there, which is unusual. Extra noticeable at that angle. Not a big deal, but kind of a strange elbow joint. Functional though. And then wrists are on ball hinges, that's fine. Torso joint, let's see. If it's any different, I'm guessing it's not. If I remember correctly, the one I just reviewed of this guy not that long ago had the cloth cape, so this is mostly the same exact figure. Does lean back really far, gets gappy and weird looking though. Leans forward, not at all. Side to side is pretty far also. Down here, a little bit of range in either direction. Same thing side to side. Rotation is good all the way around. Okay, for the hips. Going all the way out to the side. Can't do it, but pretty darn close. I'll take it. Going forward. His armor wasn't supposed to be glossy either, was it? I don't think so. Very little range going forward. They need to fix their diapers. Their diapers go up too high and down too far. Legs go back that far. Thigh swivel, basically none. Double jointed knee on this guy. Pretty good range. Closer to accurate proportions. Not great, but much better. As far as the ankle goes, we have the sculpted ball hinge, so you get really good range. Again, too heavy of a ratchet. Ankle rocker works nicely. How's the toe on this guy? Too loose. A little bit too far back, but not too bad, but it's definitely too loose and not sculpted that great. His articulation is not particularly good, so he's not standing out in this crowd. All right, two to go. Let's talk about Batfleck. This guy has really nice range to look up, not the best range to look down. Leaning side to side is not great either. Looks okay in that pose, but not the best range out of all of them. For the shoulders, we do get that ball peg, pretty good range. Shoulders work really nicely on their own, probably the best out of all of them, if memory serves. 
bull rotation. I don't think I've done six figure reviews so fast in the line. I'm probably skipping some stuff, but hopefully not. What is going on? Okay, so uh, bicep swivel is fine. Double jointed elbow works nicely. Not the best looking joint for sure, but it's there. And then the wrists have the least range out of all of them, but they're fine. It's still a ball hinge wrists. Wrist diaphragm joint on this guy goes back only a little bit, not very far. Goes forward almost not at all. Goes side to side very little. You get your rotation down here. Doesn't lean back very far or forward. Side to side is okay. Rotation is fine. I think that's the worst torso out of all of them so far. Um, probably the best sculpt though, I think. Yeah, probably. Christian Bales isn't quite as clean as this one. Okay, so legs going out to the side. What the heck? Doesn't want to go any farther than that. I can't get his legs to go any farther than that. I don't know if it's a, an error in production, but that's as far as they're going. So least range in the hips out to the side. Going forward, not the best, not the worst. Going back, not bad. Thigh swivel is the best thigh swivel. Not much, but it's there. Double jointed knees. Not bad, pretty good range. And just like the last one, decent proportioning. Nothing great, but it's okay. And then for the ankle, ugliest ankles out of all. Well, maybe not, because some of them had those really huge ones, but they're not good looking ankles. Plenty of range, heavy ratchets. Toe joint is... The heaviest and the ugliest of the bunch definitely has the biggest step right here for the sole. It's too far back. It's not loose though, so at least there's that. But not a great look for that ankle or toe joint. Decent range. Uh, okay, not the best. His head works nicely. His shoulders are probably the best, but the rest is pretty mediocre to poor, I would say, for articulation. And lastly, Robert Pattinson. That is his name, isn't it? I think so. Could, could call them sparkles. I'll, re I'll remember that. All right, looking up is very nice. Looking down is okay. His head seems huge. His head seems really big compared to all the other heads. A little bit bigger than that one. A little bigger than that one. Definitely bigger than that one. That one looks so pinched. All right, it's uh, a little bit bigger than that one, and it's definitely bigger than that one. He has the biggest head out of all of them. Okay, all right, so leaning side to side is not bad. Rotation is okay, that's fine. His collar gets in the way, but what are you gonna do? Okay, his cape also does come the farthest forward, so it's gonna impede, or not impede, but get in the way for the shoulder posing, so be aware of that. The ball peg on his is probably the least useful. It's very, very limited. Just forward and back, really, up and down is almost nothing. Shoulder pads will flex up over. He has really nice shoulders too, so that's good. Just like uh, Badfleck, nice shoulders. Shoulder pads in the way, but it's not too ugly. So I'll take it, that's not bad. Full rotation, bicep swivel is fine. Shoulder pad is connected down here. So if you like that, good. If you don't, bad. Double jointed elbow. I can't get it to bend. There we go. All right, it's definitely one of the ugliest elbows I've ever seen, <laughs> but it has function, so that's all right. Wrists have the ball hinges, so that's fine. Torso articulation on this guy leans back nicely, and it leans forward almost not at all. Lean side to side very little, full rotation. Leaning at the, oh wow, worst bottom torso joint out of all of them. Barely any range, or mine is just stuck. But it doesn't feel stuck, it just doesn't want to move any farther. Okay, so this is nice, this is not. Hips going out to the side. His diaper can flex, but the way it flexes, it pushes him down. So that's about as much as you're gonna get right there. Going forward, not bad, but it's not the best. Going back is not bad. Thigh swivel is okay, double jointed knee. Strange, very segmented down here. So it's got the most range out of all of them. Proportioning is not terrible, but this is super weird looking. So skinny and weird the way that joint is. But it's not the worst thing, I guess. You're not gonna notice it probably once you pose it. He's got these soft booties down here that get in the way of his ankle. So the worst ankle range by far. Oh, oh, that's a, so unpleasant to, you can't pose it, that sucks. All right, you do get ankle rocker out of it, so not as much, but it's there. And then his toe joint is one of the ugliest. It's not super loose, but it's definitely ugly. It's well-placed though. 
so he's pretty average as well probably subpar in some places but better in others so final verdict for the articulation for all of these guys they're just not good enough like they could be so much better if mcfarland gave a crap and they just don't seem to care do they pose yes are they fun to pose absolutely not and uh, do the joints work anywhere near as well as they should definitely not just just disappointing all the way around. I'll give the articulation as a set, not individually, but as a set, six out of 10. Way too many problems, way too many problems. That might be harsh, but if you wanna go seven, you can. These ratings don't actually matter, so you can do whatever you want. But I'm gonna say six because it's basic articulation that's just not executed well. Okay, so now it's time to do a cake rating on every single one of them before we do a final verdict. This one, uh, not bad, not bad. He's got some cake, nothing special, but I'll give him a three. It's kind of flat, but it's well shaped otherwise. So it's okay. All right, this one. Oh man, no cake, virtually no cake at all. Very, very little cake. Pancake, one. This one, a little bit better, closer to the first, maybe a little bit better than the first one. I'm gonna say he gets a four. This one, oh wow, he gets a zero. There's nothing there. He is cake free. That's a gluten free cake. And this one, not bad. Best shape overall. They even did the little thing where the muscle inserts a down here. You, If you don't know anatomy, you don't know what I'm talking about. Best shape, still kind of flat. I'm gonna give him a five. It's not bad. I would smack it. All right, and then this one, that is weird looking. It's very narrow. It's a very narrow cake. Why, are we, why aren't we focused? Focus on the cake. There we go, it's very narrow. Has a little bit of shape to it though. This one's gonna get, well from the side it's not bad, but from the front it's weird. I'll give him a four and a half. So Batfleck wins the cake rating. Okay, so final verdict on this set overall. Is it worth getting? You really like Batman, maybe. If you don't really like Batman, then why are you watching this? <laughs> it's so much Batman. No, it's just more of the same from McFarlane Toys. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's certainly not anywhere near as good as it could be. For being like the the super Batman set of all time, no accessories. Uh, one Batman doesn't even have fist hands, no batarangs, the bat signal doesn't work, the paint jobs aren't great, the articulation's not great, the sculpts aren't great. It's just average as hell. Mediocre, nothing special at all. I'm gonna say this set gets an overall, given the context of it being the super duper set, a six out of 10. I could go lower, lack of accessories is nuts to me. No batarangs? Every single one of them should have a gripping hand and a batarang. Every single one of them should have two fist hands. At bare minimum, I would argue they should all have grapnel guns and trigger finger hands too. This is just ridiculous if you ask me, and since it's my review, I'm assuming you are asking me. Also, the display stands are basic. No logos for the movies or anything like that either. Super lazy set, very disappointing. It's not the worst thing in the world. If you like the idea of it, and after you've watched this review, you think it looks kind of cool, then get it. But for me, it's it should have been so much more. And I think probably for everyone else too. It's okay. But that's about it. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching this extra long video. Oh, another question of the day. If you made it this far, which cowl do you like the most out of these Batmans? Not the figures, but the Batmans themselves. I'm gonna go with either this one or this one. I think these two have some really cool cowls. I like them. If I had to pick, I'd probably go this guy. I think he's got one of the better Batman cowls out of all of them. Again, not the figure, but the overall, the actual suit. This one's not bad. The Batman and Robin one, I like that one too. I think they have pretty cool cowls. Okay, so there it is guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, and if you haven't subscribed, you probably should. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel, so make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.